Okay, I want to ask you one thing, because I know you and I have talked about this a little bit over the last two weeks, and this is something that bothers me. There's, there's some teams, I think, that have some troubling backup quarterback situations. Okay, well, where, who are you going to start with? Well, that's what, all right, so I'm going to name t- all the teams that concern me, okay? And then you just tell me the ones that jump out to you, okay? I'm going to throw out eight teams here real quick. Wow. And maybe some of them aren't even worth talking about. Like, okay, the Lions. Of course, I'm a little concerned there. The Cowboys, the Bears, the Panthers, the Steelers, the Jags. And then I got a question mark next to the Packers and Falcons where I'm kind of like, eh, it's not horrible, but I'm not sure I'm sold on it. So which one of those are two really jump out to you because you know I look at the Bears the Steelers and the Panthers especially and the Jags where I would go those are upper echelon teams to me right now as far as the future of the NFL this coming year and I go if their starters get hurt they're done they're just I don't see how it's going to happen mm-hmm. and there's that big of a drop off uh, you correct me if I'm wrong or what what, what are your no, thoughts I, on I it? like what you're saying I think right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers it's Joshua Dobbs yes and um I, I, you know, just being honest, I wasn't crazy about him coming out of college. I said, okay, he's a pretty good athlete. I really don't think he's an NFL, you know, starting thrower. I'm not going to say he's – well, whatever. That, that was my thought. Yeah. And I, it was really, really terrible when he played his first preseason yes. games. But this year, throwing it much better, better presence, and it would give me a little more hope. Well, much more hope than than I had before. Of course, Chicago would worry me. Chase Daniels, yes, he's going to be great in preseason. Right. Uh, but always, you know, is. I saw him play those two games last year, and especially outdoors, you have to worry a lot. You have a Super Bowl team, and if you have to go on the road, maybe in well, hey, what do I mean, go on the road, play in Chicago, yeah, or anywhere else that I think it's it, the situation's not perfect. He's going to struggle. Right. It's, it's it's just plain and simple. So those two, and of course, uh, I'm trying to think of all the teams that bother me. Uh, of course, the Giants are in a good situation. Either the Panthers and Jags were. Well, the Panthers. I don't know who's going to be the backup. The Detroit Lions. That's a problem. If you don't know who it's going to be, to well, me that's, that's true. And I don't a problem. Have a quarterback. I think the backup quarterback right now, Tom Savage, hurt in Detroit. Yeah. David Fells. Right. Well, you know. That's and, and and Josh Johnson is there now. Of course, I saw that. I mean, that man is. It's amazing, right? He, he's everywhere. He is. But who was the other team you said before? I said Detroit. Well, the Jaguars. I mean, if Nick Fall, if Nick Foles gets hurt, I just go. What's well, Gardner Minshew? It looks yeah, like right exactly now. right. And I just you know again, I, I'm not saying he can't be anything down the line, but we're talking about a rookie. And I just I, I don't see how it's that works. It's an unbelievable drop just in resume you, with with what Nick Foles has done. Yes. And then this is a Mike Leach quarterback. Right. I mean, and there's been so many that were terrific in college that haven't made it in the NFL. So that's what you go to from a Super Bowl MVP to someone who played at Washington State. Right. Well, yes. Uh, listen, I've watched his preseason games. Look, of course, he knows how to play the position. And all, they get to throw the ball every down of every practice and every game of his year up in Washington State. That helped. That You can see that in it. But there is, you know, Paul, let me ask you, yep. what is his redeeming physical quality that's going to make him successful in the NFL? Yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a what great is point. It, Paul? Right. I don't know what it is. I mean, he, he obviously, to be at the places he was in college and to excel at Washington State, he's probably pretty smart probably pretty accurate, but you talk about a physical quality to play anywhere when it's not perfect, like you mentioned, I don't know what that is. Well, no, because that, that you, you answered the question. There is not one. His right. redeeming quality is, of course, his experience, but his brain. You know, you can see that he knows how to play. The one thing they do with Mike Leach, his quarterbacks go through reads really fast. Uh, they dump the ball off a lot, so they're, they're great at that. Uh, Gardner did it. Luke Falk did it. You know, they read, read, quick, boom, right. dump. Right. Do you put and anything on the fact, Phil, that there's so many from Cliff Kingsbury to Graham Harrell uh, to Luke Falk, now to Minshew, that were excellent in college week to week but have never really made it to the NFL? Does that, does that matter to you at all when you think about if he can do it in the NFL, that there's been guys like him in the past that haven't done it? No, I judge just the guy for that year, and they, they all can be different. So I don't ever buy into the fact, oh, 
Alabama quarterbacks don't succeed in the NFL, so I don't think I'll draft. No, uh, there's there's going to be a guy. That's, that's what everybody have. thought about Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I had arguments yeah, oh, yeah, with, yeah, oh, he's a right. Texas Tech. Right. Uh, yeah. Cliff Kingsbury started to see talent at least, whereas right. some of these other, you know, what what the hell they call that offense, the Red Raider, what the hell the hell is that Air offense? Raid? Air Raid. Yeah. Air Raid. At least Kingsbury at A&M recruited guys like Manziel and Kyler Murray, okay, and then had Baker Mayfield at Texas Tech and right. Mahomes. So at least he sees talent in the these other guys that have co coached this Air Raid. It's, it's all been – yeah, you know, made up crap. It just oh, really yeah, just get rid of the ball. Right. We're going to formation you. We're just going to go yep. fast and then this and that. And look, not to demean any quarterbacks, but guys that had great college careers and people, you know, they hype them because they, oh, they they, they win. Oh, my God. I, you know, that drives <laughs> me crazy. Yeah. You know, you, you and the great, now we don't have to hear it much anymore. Oh, Patrick Mahomes, how'd it go? How's he doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, okay. Let's go on to another subject there, mister. And <laughs> and, and uh, that that does it. But think of Matt Leinert. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Tim Tebow. Right, but yeah. when you drafted him, what, what, what was it? Yeah, oh, they won national championships, and it was great. Look who played with him. Right. I, I would venture to say everybody – that was on that team, on that offense, almost everyone was drafted in the NFL and had somewhat modern success. Right. Pete Carroll had to chase guys out that were starters because he had to play the backup. Right. Okay? Oh, man, we, you, you got to come out. I yeah. got to play the other guy. He's really good, and, you know, you're, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be drafted high. You got to go. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> and, and the same with – with the Florida Gators, go right. back and look at that offense and who was on that line and who the receivers and running backs were when Tim Tebow was there. Aaron was- Hernandez, Percy Harvin, Rainey, Lewis Murphy, the 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 white uh, you know receiver who said the racist comment for the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles. Philadelphia. Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper. Riley right. Cooper. I mean, you can go on and on, and the oh, whole team is in the NFL. There was another one. There was another Olympic sprinter back there with Rainey. I forgot who that Percy, was. Oh, I said Percy Harvin. Maybe you didn't hear me say that. No, no, I heard no. It was somebody else. There, there was yeah. There, there might have been three. Well, yeah, it was there three. Was three. Might yeah. have been four. I, and, and who knows? And it was, it oh wait, oh wait, the offensive line. Oh yeah, the Pouncey brothers. Yes. Oh, they're no good. <laughs> right. Marcus Gilbert. Oh yeah, you know he's oh he he wasn't as good because he went in the second round instead of the first. Was Max right. Starks there? Yeah. Uh, yes, he was. He might have been. That? He said Max, Max Starks. Starks. He might have been before then though. Okay. I got I got to look at when he I was. I think he probably was. Right. Right. But uh, you you kind of get the point, right. and you know it just it, it's as we judge, and I we try to be fair, but I said this to my son, and Paul, I'll say it to you, when I watch players. So especially quarterbacks, because, you know, oh, well, what's his one loss record? Yeah, mine was great at Moorhead. We were a powerhouse. We were, you know, we had a year, we won three games. It was awesome. Right. Best year of my career. <laughs> right. But just judge the person, and I say this and I mean it, I did it again this year, which I didn't study him as hard this year as before, because I do think there's a little more to right now besides just the physical quality. I want him. But really, do you really know how to play? Right. Have they polished you up as a as a quarterback? That's what we're concerned with. Point in our example of what you're trying to say, Drew Locke to maybe Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. There's no question. They're right. not even in the same league. Daniel Jones is so far above Drew Locke right now, and just knowing how to play. Exactly. And that is just because. Not because of who's smart and who's not. It's because of the systems they played in and how they were taught. Right. right. And, you know, the old, well, we, how about Kyler Murray? And, and not saying anything, but now he can't do the fake clap and claps and all that stuff. You know, that's outlawed, I guess, right. or whatever. Yeah. That's, so that kind of changes it. But, um, but I go back to my point. When I watch them play, I don't know the score. I don't know their numbers. I'll look at their numbers later. Uh, I don't know if they win or lose the games I'm watching. I don't care. I'm just watching the one player. Right. Play by play. Is he doing the right thing? Is he making the right read? Ooh, that's a – wow, that's an impressive physical play. That's all you can do. Yes. And then, and of course, the, the other thing, you don't get to know who they are as people, which is a big deal, and you don't get to know what they're teaching them in the system. Right. Right. 
Like, I'll give you an example. Some teams teach read high to low. Well, you know, there's a lot of teams that teach the opposite, read low to high. Yes. Throw it to the short guy quick. Right. Get that five yards. Mm-hmm. But, oh, shoot, there was a 20-yard. It's okay. Just right. get the five yard. So that, that happens, too. And, and the last, the, mo- the most one important thing, personality, leadership, those, we can't learn that by watching film. Right. And a good example, the greatest example, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Oh, you know, no matter what you thought about him in college, doesn't matter. He is a leader of men, yes. and it's easy for him. Right. And he will keep the troops under control. Yep. Because they respect him. And then the most important thing, too, Paul, your next quarterback, Christopher Me, is your relationships. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of work the room in a way to make sure that, you know, you, you're doing the right thing? Because you being a quarterback holds a lot of power. And to be able to influence other players in many, many ways, if you do that, of course, that, you, you can't measure that. But people that scout and whatever, I think they can find these things out about these quarterbacks coming out. Yeah, definitely. It's the hardest thing about our job right now is not getting to see some of these guys personally, talk to them, get them on a board, and see what they talk about. Dad, you the man. Well, no, the last about thing is. About time you contributed to this podcast. About time. <laughs> well, thank you. But the last, the one you talked about, Carolina, I think they're, <laughs> I would say, not great concern. But, you know, listen, once again, it, Cam gets hurt. Can the team continue down the path that they're going which they were last year right and i would say right now no yeah i'm with you it's a concern it's only two preseason games but again i'm just judging the player not the team and i don't see it yeah i'm with you i'm with you we'll see where it goes all right good to hear your voice man you're the man and the last thing is paul you big chicken you you said you were going to come up here this summer and throw and everything and it's still summer NBC's been killing him. He's he was all over the place. He was over in Europe for the whole month of July. So he, you know, he's just getting back in. He had to do the Tour de France. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, okay. Is you the know, invite still there? You know what I say? Um, it's always there. Okay. Don't tell me about the pain. Just show just, me the baby. Okay. Just get it done. All right. And okay. the other one, one more time, Christopher. Yes. Because I heard your big boy. On uh, the radio show the other day when you weren't here. Um, uh, uh, Big Cat. Big Cat. Right. Yeah, I can never right. remember his nickname. Big Cat. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's, okay, he's Big Cat. Here. He goes, you know, they have pelts on the wall. Now, what is it, son? It's pelts on a horse. Okay. Do you understand why? Yes, because, you know, if you're a fur trapper or anything like that, you'd put them on the horse, I guess. I don't That's know. That's right. Don't yeah. tell me you're a great fur trapper when I go out and look at your horse and there are no pelts on the horse. Thank you. My God, you guys beat it and say it wrong about once a week. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. I feel better. See, see you later. You, see you, Kentucky All Phil. Right. See you, Phil. <laughs> see ya. I'm, I'm going to be in his kitchen drinking coffee soon. I think he's going to be, why is Paul here? Yeah, right, because right. Because you challenged him. But, yeah, you'll challenge him, but then they'd be like, oh, it's good you're here. Let's go out to the field. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's go right. throw. Yeah. Um, you know, we could have done a B-side on the Panthers, too. Yes. Just, just because we all talk about Cam Newton's shoulder. I will say this just real quick because we're going to get on to Josh Norris here. Yeah. The Panthers supporting cast around Cam Newton, I believe, is the best he's ever had in his career. But you don't love the backup situation. I don't love the backup situation, but we still got Greg Olson at tight end. Mm -hmm. You got McCaffrey at running back. Ian Thomas, their backup tight end, had played real well last year. But then you get into the Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore conversation with a guy like Chris Hogan who might be able to do some things. Uh, I look at that and go, wow, that's pretty damn good. And the other thing I messed up on our B-side stuff, we talked about the Browns and the offensive line, you know, my offensive line yep. question. Yep. One of the great things the Browns did this offseason, too, is bring in James Campen, who was the offensive line coach of the Green Bay Packers. And that gives me hope for a group that I say is unproven commodity at this point. Yep. But, man, when you have a coach like that who's done what he did with Green Bay the last few years, Pass protection-wise is one of the best O-line coaches of football. That gives me confidence that they'll get it done. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.